So if we've got utility functions for everyone, and we're interpreting utility as a measure of how happy they find a certain state of affairs or how desirable they find it, then one real simple way to aggravate the pref aggregate the preferences of everybody in a society is to just add up all their welfare. Whatever gives the greatest happiness to the most people is the way society should be order ordered. So this is called, uh, you know, the utilitarian approach to welfare. Okay, so we've got a welfare function. Uh, it takes as its inputs the utility of everybody, and in this function, we just add those all up. So instead of U A for U Alice and U B for Bob, there's a hundred colonists. I'm giving them all a number from one to one hundred. So we've got the utility of person one, two, three, etc. The utilitarian approach, we just add all those utilities up, and I've written it two ways, uh, just adding up the sequence from 1 to 100. And then this is the uh, notation for a summation, which we're going to use in this course. Uh, this big old capital Greek letter uh, means add up the terms that are here, ranging from substituting this i all the way from 1 to 100. So you can see that if you broke that all the way out, uh, follow the instructions, it would say, for uh, start with one and you get that term, then go to two, you get that term all the way up to 100 and add all those things up. So it's just a compact way of writing this idea. Now, if we do this, we can map out what the, uh, we can sort of map out in difference curves where this function is equal to some set what level of welfare. Okay, so let's have, let's go back to Alice and Bob and we've got 100 here, and we've got 100 here, and we've got 50 and 50. And uh, this is saying that it's only the total sum of welfare that matters. So if Bob has 100 or Alice one has 100, either option is great. All right, cool. If Bob has 50 or Alice has 50, we just add it up we're indifferent between all those. All of those are equally good ways to run society. Something in the middle where they each have 50 is just as good as Bob having 100 and Alice having nothing. And we can keep going out here. And welfare is increasing as we move in this direction. The utilitarian framework, simple, makes sense, and it's intuitively plausible, right? If more people are happy, that's a desirable way to organize society. But you can see in this graph that the way that this challenges our sort of moral intuitions about a good way to run society is that it's uh, it's very open to massive inequality. If some people get huge utility and others get zero, but they add up to the same amount as everybody having a roughly equal share, this thing doesn't care. Okay, So the computer might think that this is not actually the best way to organize society because a situation where one person has... Uh, utility 100 and another person has zero utility so essentially they're dead is a bad way to go but there are other ways to do it that's not the only way to combine all these preferences all right another framework is based on the work of a philosopher named John Rawls this is the Rawlsian welfare framework and in this one what we end up doing is welfare is equal to the utility of whoever in society is worst off. Okay, so in the last one, utility was kind of like perfect substitutes. People's utility are perfect substitutes. In this one, this is the formula for perfect complements. This, uh, we don't improve welfare at all unless everybody is better off. Okay, and so what is the indifference curve look like here. If here's Alice and here's Bob and here's 100, 50, 50 and 100. Well, if they're both at 50, then the utility is 50 because the minimum of two 50s is 50. If Bob has more, uh, so this is welfare 50. If Bob ends up getting better off, so he goes up to 100, but Alice is just as worse off, that doesn't count for anything. We're still at welfare 50 because in this framework, we only care about who are, who's worst off in society. So we end up drawing a vertical line. Similarly, if 
Bob is stuck at 50 and we give Alice more utility, we still are on the same welfare indifference curve, basically. We don't go up. Only if they both get better off, so say, for example, they're both at 100 utility, are we now on to a higher welfare indifference curve, okay? Where welfare is now equal to 100 because the welfare, the utility of the lowest person is worst off is, is 100. And this is kind of the polar opposite of the last one. Uh, it doesn't tolerate any inequality at all. Uh, if you're going to make anyone better off, unless you can lift all boats, we don't care about that. And maybe that's a good way, and may, or maybe that's also a too extreme way to organize society. Maybe we want something that's in the middle, that kind of tolerates a little bit of inequality. So we end up with something that's like Cobb Douglas, where if we're here at 50 and 50, if we can make Alice better off, I'm sorry, Bob better off, but keep Alice still at 50, we might say, that's still a good thing. That's not terrible. And so we advance to a higher welfare thing. But as we keep going up, this line gets steeper and steeper, and we have to sort of sort of the gains are, are smaller and smaller, okay? And this one would be like, you know, intolerant of inequality, but only kind of extreme inequality. So in the middle, it's sort of like perfect substitutes where, uh, you know, one person's utility, we can trade off against another's. But in the, in the tails, we're close to vertical and horizontal. So if you're going to make Bob a little bit, uh, uh, if you're going to make Alice a little bit better off, or worse off or whatever you know the to stay on the same indifference curve or welfare indifference curve you're gonna have to see a big change in bobs now here's the thing this is a different framework to how to think about these things we've got kind of curves corners straight lines but economics can't tell you which of these is right that's a job for society philosophers ethics people to figure out and we just don't have the tools to contribute I think very meaningfully to this discussion it's a problem for politics, and it's not actually a problem that a supercomputer can really solve because it's about things that are sort of beyond mathematical representations of preferences. What we've really shown is that there's no way to math your way out of this. You can't just take people's preferences and then come to sort of a logically conclusion, this is the optimal way to organize society. We can only say, give you a framework for how to think about different ways of doing it. but. There is something we can do which is not going to give us a, sort of the optimal way to give organized society, but it's going to give us an important minimum criteria that we can kind of all agree on. And that's what we'll talk about in the next video.